do you like action? What about explosions? How about suave leading men? How about explosions? What about special mission army stuff? And how about those explosions? Well, we've got it all as Loop and Larry attack Megaforce. In a world filled with intergalactic space battles, meta-human destruction on a global scale, and psychopathic serial hauntings, there's only one team who can make sense of it all. When your world is overrun with rampant pop culture, call Loop and Larry, Guardians of Geek! Oh, 64 Yo. explosions! <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Loop. And I'm Larry! And this is Guardians of Geek. And we are back. We've been off for a little bit. We've had stuff going on, so it's just been tough to uh, to uh, get back together to do a show. But we're going to do... This is one of the first of two shows we're doing. And then we um, will take the summer off and we'll be back for season six. Yes. Right? We got to make sure we're picked up for season six. They haven't they haven't secured our contracts yet, so <laughs> we're on the bubble right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a while. So uh, I did a I am in a sketch comedy troupe, so I did a show which basically took up all my time. Like if you're not at rehearsals, you're memorizing. Like it's it's just insane. So I did that show last weekend, so or two weekends ago, last weekend, two weekends ago, and uh, so it's done now. So I, I'm now my time's way freed up. <laughs> well, exactly. And so I didn't even I didn't even bother to text loop and be like, and say like, okay, what are we doing? What are we doing for this podcast? Cause I knew I would get no response or I'd be like, no time rehearsing, no time memorizing, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, we'll just let that show pass. And speaking of the show, like the, he's not just in a comedy troupe. It's like the pop culture, like comedy troupe of the gener of our generation. It's called Project <laughs> G Force. And, and it's literally like, like Saturday Night uh, Live. Yep. Yeah, and it's just wall to wall pop culture, and it's it's just the greatest thing. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> what were some of the elements that you had this year? Uh, we did. It was kind of a Stranger Things arc on yes. it, so we did that, and uh, even the part where I get lifted into the air as well, using special <laughs> effects that you would not believe. <laughs> it was the funniest show. It was literally, I was literally like gasping for air as I was as I was laughing all the way through it. It is such a <laughs> <funny> thing. <laughs> uh, what else did I do? Uh, I was also I went to Shockstock, which is the horror. The um, it's here in London, Ontario. It's a, a horror con. Um, it's more like B level horror and exploitation and that kind of stuff. Like it's it's very niche horror. Um, and it was pretty cool. Uh, I got a a photo with uh, Felisa Rose from um, from Sleepaway Camp, and I also got one from Michelle Bauer, who was in like a ton of like movies in the eighties and, and early nineties, like horror. She's like a scream queen from that from that time period. If you're into horror, um, one of my favorite movies is Evil Tunes, and she's in that. So it's like... <laughs> I, I had to miss it this year, and I was very I was very depressed that I did because that is it's a really fun time. It's such a unique con too because it is very niche um there are there aren't that many horror conventions and this yeah. one encompasses all kinds of horror and lots of vhs tapes and like classic vintage yeah. it's, it's terrific <laughs> yeah also if you want to know more about it you can go all the way back to episode 10 yep. where we interviewed uh, um, james and jake from uh from the grim brothers and who put on the show every year and it's it's really interesting that's a really funny po podcast actually so go back and episode 10 is the one you're looking for so it's pretty fun anything else what else what else what else anything else that was it that's pretty much that's it the awesome. show took up all my time i know you've been out and around doing all sorts of cool things i i packed in a bunch of uh pop culture uh events in the last couple of weeks um so i could tell you about so the, you, there's this trend now of taking shows and movies and making them experiences live experiences and pop-up uh, experiences that they that travel around the country so um a few of them came to our area so i had to jump on them so um i checked out the uh stranger things experience um which i think started in new york or maybe los angeles i'm not sure but it's made it to toronto and it's in toronto now i think until the end of june if you get a chance to go if you're a, a stranger things fan this thing is phenomenal like it it's, oh, cool. it's about it takes about 45 minutes to go through the actual experience but you 
legitimately feel like you are in the Hawkins laboratory because it all takes place in, in the laboratory. Well, not all of it, but a good chunk of it. I don't want to spoil any of it, but it the, the special effects that they use are unbelievable because they happen right in front of you um, and they're part of the environment. So you don't know when they're coming. It's not like a haunted house. Like there are no real jumps. Like there's not actors in suits that jump out. There are actors. Yeah. Um, so there are people who portray, you know, scientists and people like that, and they're top notch, like they're really good actors, and they're really into it. Uh, so you, they interact with you, and you interact with them. But the whole premise is that you have powers that you didn't realize you had. Um, and so yeah. you're in the Hawkins lab, and they actually figure out which powers you have, and you make things happen. Um, and so you, but then that's cool. But then they have video of the actual actors, the kids who come on and they're because they're in the Hawkins lab as well. And they're trying to get L out of there. And so now you, because you have powers need to help them get L out of the, out of the laboratory, but things are going bad in the laboratory. There's all kinds that's of stuff cool. that's happening. Anyway, it is so immersive and so well done. Like you actually feel like you're there. So I highly recommend this. If you get a chance to go, it's totally worth the drive. If you're in the Toronto area, it's in Toronto right now. Go. <laughs> you will not regret <laughs> it. It is it is such a fun thing. So there was that one. And then uh the same day we did that one, we we also hit up um a Jurassic World uh experience, uh, which wasn't too far away. Um it was it, it was it was really good. They had a lot of animatronics of dinosaurs that were actually really good animatronics, like they moved naturally and they made sounds and stuff. So it was it was pretty cool to to see and they were life size for the most part. Um yeah. and, I mean it was a little cheesier than the uh than the Stranger Things one, but it was it was still a pretty cool. I think that one's there all summer and maybe until September. It's in Mississauga. Um okay. so, I mean, if you like if you like Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, that sort of thing, it's worth it. It's not not very expensive, but it's it's a pretty cool hour of of being immersed in that of the the world of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jurassic World. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty awesome just... um, yeah so there's that one finally uh that uh just opened in london where we are uh is the um disney animation experience i think that's what it's called uh something uh, something like that so it's um it's just it's uh, a celebration of disney movies over the years um but it's also an immersive experience so it's but it's all projector so you're in a big huge room and all the walls floor to ceiling uh project the uh the movies in a certain way like they're it's a storytelling but the floor is also has also projection on it and the yeah. floor is interactive like the projection they put on the floor is interactive so you step on things and think the images move and change um so it's it, it feels pretty pretty immersive like you're actually sort of in the in the in these animated movies so that's about an hour long as well and it's and it's really cool. It's cool that they're doing these events that you can go and sort of put yourself into these movies or TV shows or whatever they are for a little while and really feel what it's like. That I'm really I'm really enjoying the fact that they're creating these things uh, and touring them around. It's it's worth doing. But of those ones, the the uh, um, Stranger Things, if you can get to it. A hundred percent recommend it. It is such. Oh yeah, it looks really cool. I'd love to go see it. Like it looks yeah. wild. You would you would really like it. You would really like it. It's not like you said. It's not like a, a house of horrors. Like it's not that sort of thing. But it's it's pretty intense. Like it, it gets yeah. kind of it gets kind of intense, but in a really good way. And it's it's super cool. So those are yeah those are the the big pop culture things. And then <laughs> I just wanted to show something real quick here. I'm a little bit proud of this. This one of these, this just happened. One of these things just happened today. Anyway, so um, I like to bike. I, I do a lot of cycling and biking. Like my family and I signed up for this thing called the um, uh, the Conqueror Challenge. So it's they're like virtual marathons. So you get medals, okay. but you, because it was the the pandemic you couldn't do any of these things in person so you it tells you how far you have to go you set yourself a goal like a time frame and when you're finished you get an actual medal like a, a medal for it sounds like exercise to me yes <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's why I know nothing about it. Oh, no, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so a year ago, they uh, offered a Lord of the Rings challenge. Well, as oh, a no. Lord of the Rings.
Things fan, I could not turn that down. So it, it includes five medals. So it's a long process. But what they did was they actually figured out exactly how many kilometers or miles it's in both it took the uh hobbits to get from the shire to mordor with the ring at like exactly oh, that's awesome <laughs> yeah so they so they actually plot this out and so each of the medals is um a portion of their journey so um i've i've been working on this for the last year there are five medals my fourth medal just came today I just finished my fourth medal last week. So I'll show you the first four. And then in September, when we start up in season six, I'll show you the fifth because I'll be done the, this, the fifth one. Because okay. there's, a, there's a cool thing that happens. But anyway, so they look like this. So this is the first one. It's called it's called the Shire. Can you, there you go. Can, okay. you touch. Yep. So it's called the Shire, and this is the medal for it. And then and it's cool because it's all like made of metal. But when oh, wow, it looks really cool. The, the Shire, it actually comes with the ring. The one ring. Oh with, wow! With, yeah, with the inscription, like the elven, elvish inscription on it. So that comes in here because this is the keep it, keep it secret, keep it safe. Remember that Gandalf gave to, uh, to uh, Frodo. So yeah. it starts. So that's the first. That's the first one. That that was a two hundred and fifty three kilometer uh, trek out of the Shire. So that was that okay. was the first, that was the first one. And then after the. The Shire, they make their way to um, to uh, Rivendell, where the the Fellowship forms. So then that takes you to the Fellowship, um, and then you have to be careful because oh, oh ring wraiths. <laughs> God, that's really detailed. Holy it's cow! Really, yeah, and they're all like solid metal, and they're they're yeah. just they're just awesome. So that trek from the from the Shire to the from from out of the Shire to the Rivendell to meet the was 1094 kilometers. So that was a long one. So that that was that's number two. So then after that, once the uh the fellowship has formed, then they go to the mines of Moria. So and then oh you can see in here. Whoop. Oh there wow, holy cow, that's so detailed for like, know, it's, uh, like... So cool. it's so cool. But yes, yeah, so and this is for biking. But you could do anything you want. You could walk or bike or literally run, whatever you choose to do, because it's a virtual challenge. Um, and you you have a year and a half to complete the challenge. So okay. you, you don't have to do it fast. You could do it on your own pace. Um, but then you get these, and they're like all solid metal. So anyway, there's there's uh, Gimli inside the mines of Moria. And then, uh-oh, the ball rock. The oh, ball yeah. Rock. Look at that, eh? <laughs> These are the coolest things. So anyway, so the Mines of Moria is is not as long. It's only 64 kilometers, believe it or not, and, which is actually kind of cool to know these things when they're like, it, yeah. so they had to travel 64 kilometers from the, the entrance of the Mines of Moria to the exit. Like that's still a long way. <laughs> but anyway, so then once they come out of the Mines of Moria, then, <laughs> uh-oh, guess who finds them? Sarah. The eye. So... <laughs> so this is is that ever cool yeah this is the trek and on the back it's a little hard to see but there's there's um mordor there's mordor back there it's yeah. kind of burnt out you can kind of see it but anyway so this is the one that just came today uh and it's you can there you go you can kind of see it's shiny and pretty yeah. cool so so now now saron is watching them and that trek was 1075 kilometers this is to oh, the, good for you to the gates of mordor this one so that's so that's where we are now. So I'm I'm currently on the the Mordor uh, challenge. It's the last one. It's 454 kilometers. Once they get into Mordor, they have to travel up to Mount Doom, and that's 454 kilometers. I had no idea it was that far, but it is. Oh, yeah. So I still have 394 kilometers remaining. But the whole trek for the for the hobbits from leaving the Shire to reaching Mount Doom was 2,920 kilometers. That's how wow. far they traveled. I don't know how long it actually took them. <laughs> but but do, you get, so do you get to ride on the backs of birds at all at any yes, point during this? Yes, the last one, they, they send you an eagle and you get to jump on the back of that. <laughs> and, and also, what do you get if you just make it to the end of the Shire? If you get out of your uh, house and make it to just yeah, to the end? Like... You get a little, you get like a pat in the back. Good job, oh, yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> the participation ribbon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First place. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> so anyway, I just I just wanted to point I just wanted to show this because I'm pretty proud of this. But so when uh, in September I will have finished the Mordor, and then I will show you the last one because it's actually a pretty. There's a thing that happens that uh, is pretty is kind of cool. So I will show that. But anyway, I'm all about Lord of the Rings now. I'm all excited about. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. Well, let's move this along on your bike, yes. and uh, let's head to, let's head for top pop. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey kids, it's time for Luke and Larry's totally tubular top pop. All right, this is top pop, where we just talk about things that that like, are cool, that are uh, trending, or things that that we're excited about. And today we're just going to focus on summer movies, just because it is kind of the beginning of the summer. Um, today's uh, June. 6th. 7th it's uh it's prince day today it's the oh. uh, anniversary of his of his passing so uh seven seven years is crazy um so uh so we're gonna talk about summer movies so um the summer uh movie they kicked off with basically guardians yep this year and fast x did you see uh, did you see guardians and or any of them i yes i've seen guardians a couple of times um fast x i stopped watching the fast and furious franchise at probably about seven um so, i saw you know i that? saw three that the last, the last one i saw was three which was tokyo drift that was the last yes. one i saw yeah no I, I gave i gave up when i heard that they were going into space <laughs> i was like <Yeah>. okay <laughs> apparently apparently i've also read that the the next one which may be the last one may involve involve time travel <sighs> for real <laughs> like, come on so yeah. bad. I, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that series. I don't know why, but people love it, obviously, because they keep they keep making them. So, um, so June last week, um, the Boogeyman and Spider Man across the universe or Spider Verse came out. Yep. Um, I, have, yes. Boogeyman looks cool. Uh, Spider Verse was awesome. And for whatever reason, I've never seen the first, the original. It, yeah, do yourself a favor. They're really good. That's what. Like, and this one, was, this one was amazing. <laughs> so then uh, next week or this weekend coming up uh, for uh, depending when you're watching, it could be out now. Uh, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Right is out. I kind of I didn't see the last one. I I can't remember which one it was. I did. I don't know if I saw Bumblebee. I think I did, but I can't remember. I saw Bumblebee. What? I don't remember the last Transformers. But I mean, they start all blending together after like the third one. So I'm not. I'm, There's I'm, a lot of gears and things going on. Yes. Like, <laughs> I'm, sure I'll go, I'm sure I'll go see it because I I think I've seen them all. But uh, I I don't know. I I feel like my enthusiasm for the Transformers Transformers movies is kind of like. Meh, meh. Elemental, which is something you'll probably want to see. Yes. <laughs> the new Pixar movie that you're yeah. super excited about. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you wait, have you have you actually seen a Pixar movie? I don't know which ones are Pixar and which ones are Disney. Oh is is, to- is Toy Story Pixar? Yes. yes. Okay, I've seen Toy Story two. But not no, Toy I, Story. No, one. sorry, I've seen three. I've seen three. But not not the first two. No. <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't know why i just i just so have so little interest in the pixar stuff i'm sure it's great i just it is. It, so sorry which is the one with the house of the balloons that's up yeah no. did you see that okay yeah <laughs> we walked out halfway through oh <laughs> really it was terrible it was like oh. so like depressing oh. i was like it okay was. this isn't fun that was a, that was depressing that one was depressing yeah i agree <laughs> <laughs> um uh june 16th the flash yep so i'm not I, i'm not a massive dc fan but it looks kind of cool it does look really cool oh i i sorry i okay we'll keep going we'll keep going i forgot okay. i forgot to mention my the flash is directed by andy muschietti who directed the two it movies i forgot to tell you about my cool it experience but i, I can save that i'll save that for next time yeah save that for the next podcast save that for the next uh, one. Okay. asteroid city comes out as well it's not really geeky but if you're a film geek Yes. Wes Anderson is like a, a thing. I just I feel like Wes Anderson movies are geeky. <laughs> like they're not like they're not like superhero y or anything, but they look comic booky. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, yeah, but they're definitely like if you're a film buff, like yeah. usually you're a fan of Wes Anderson just because of his composition and everything else. Like, like it's it's a they're wild movies to look at, like for sure. Yeah. Uh June 30th, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. I'm so hyped about this. I am like oh. me- mega hyped. Yes. Like I this I, it doesn't even need to be the best movie. It just needs to wipe my mind clear of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> That's all it needs to do. <laughs> Make me forget that that happened, and I'll be happy. 
Um, in July, we got Insidious, The Red Door, um, Mission Impossible. Again, another series. I think I've seen this two. Of oh, them. really? Interesting. I, I quite like that series. I think it's. I think it's kind of fun. It's a good series for when there's no Bond movie out. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it fills in the yeah. gap between Bond movies <laughs> pretty well. I think. I, I quite. I'm. I'm kind of excited about that only because I know Tom Cruise does all of his own stunts. Uh, yeah, and- it's amazing. I just oh. uh, I saw a picture today actually with him and two of his stunt doubles who just happened to look like him, and oh. I couldn't tell which one was Tom Cruise. Really, like they all looked exactly the same. Like I was like, who is which one's which? It, it's is crazy. It's a crazy photo. Um, well, the- but what I've heard, what I've heard is that he now has uh, developed the ability to clone himself. So it probably was, <laughs> it was probably three Tom Cruises. <laughs> well, at least Scientology is good for something. It's like- yes. <laughs> uh what else do we have on uh, uh barbie's coming out of course a lot of hype around that it look actually looks pretty funny look um fun. here's one that you're gonna love on uh, july 28th haunted mansion yeah i well so i'm really excited about this movie however i'm a little worried that it's gonna be too goofy like you got okay. danny DeVito, you got danny devito in there uh i'm not i just like i want it to be scary Originally, Guillermo del Toro was supposed to direct this movie. He he was supposed to do the Haunted Mansion movie, which was that was the thing. It was going to be scary and awesome, and and now he's not. It's I don't remember who the director is, but so I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be too goofy. But the trailers are still pretty intriguing, so I'm excited. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be like what's that movie with Michael J. Fox where there's Back the ghost? The oh, <laughs> um, the the Frighteners. Thank you. Uh, the Frighteners. All right. <laughs> uh, yes. the, the fright. I feel like it's going to be sort of like that. You know, the ghosts are a little bit goofy in that. Like, yes. I, I feel like it's going to be sort of in that vein, but maybe not. Yeah, um, that, that's a pretty good comparison, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, August, we've got uh, Meg 2, The Trench. Eight. Yes. Isn't that the, I, isn't that the, um, the Family Guy spinoff? Yes, yes. Meg got her own show. <laughs> Yep, that's, that's it. Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie comes out, which I'm like, I, I'm so so on it. The animation seems weird to me, but maybe once you're kind of in, immersed in it, it won't be as bad. Like, I just, yeah, it looks a little different. I was never a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I like, I enjoy them, I think they're kind of fun, but I don't, I don't know if I think I might wait for streaming for that one. Yeah, I think so too. And finally, the Blue Beetle, which I know nothing about, but it's a, again another DC property, but yeah. I'm a DC fan and I honestly don't know much about the Blue Beetle. I mean, I really I'm a DC fan and but I'm pretty limited to like Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. That's they have pretty- a lot of side characters which I just don't know who they are. Like yeah. I just I, but I don't I don't read DC, so I mean, I guess if I there's probably a lot of Marvel characters people don't know but I know. So it's like the True. it's just it's a little odd. But anyways, those are your summer movies and there's it looks like there's a lot on there, a lot at least at least one to, one thing a month pretty much to to, to get at so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing most of these so it looks pretty like oh. a pretty good summer and when when does um ghostbusters pop up is that in the fall it must like be that. in the fall it wasn't on the summer list okay so it's so, I might be, so there's i mean there's a this is a quite a solid year for uh for uh geeky movies <laughs> and pop yeah. culture stuff i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty excited for it to start yeah i found this the first six months has been a little slow like for yes. for tv and movies like there hasn't been a lot of really huge things come out like yeah. um but the uh hopefully the the last six months will pick up a little bit and, and some cool things will come out so we'll I'm see hoping, i'm hoping so that's that's the plan <laughs> Cause, <laughs> cause, Larry got to go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do a review show at the end of this year. We need something. Come on, give, know, us a, yes. give, give us a little something, something. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just jump right into the pop capacitor. And uh, I've got a real doozy today for you. All right, welcome back. This is the Pop Capacitor. This is where we look at a TV show, movie, a toy, whatever it is, and we uh, see if it still stands up today, um, something from our childhood usually. And so we decided to do something kind of weird. So the next two shows, we're, we uh, are picking like a movie or a TV show that we loved as a kid, bought, 
on VHS or, or sorry, on DVD or Blu-ray because we loved it as a kid, but haven't watched it since. So we yes. haven't really watched it since a kid, but we, I don't know if my memory still stands up or whatever. So I picked this movie. I thought it was the coolest thing as a kid. It was called Megaforce. It came out in uh, 1982. It was uh, June 25th, and it was uh, basically bombed. It was uh, nominated for three three Razzies. Um, yep. It was uh, 20 million to make. It made like three million dollars, <laughs> and uh, uh, directed by Hal Needham, who actually was he was a stunt man himself, and he was in tons of movies as a stunt man. He directed Smokey and the Bandit movies. That was sort of his claim to fame. And uh, Barry Boswick is the main character in it, who is um, Brad Majors in Rocky Horror. Yep. So he was. Uh, so he's in it as well. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> I picked this one because I, I loved it as a kid. I bought it because it was like, I just remember it being like so cool. And uh, we're just going to take a look at it now. I can't tell by, by your face, Larry, that I'm not sure how you take it. I loved this movie. I, I absolutely loved it. I was like, this is like one of the greatest movies of all time. <laughs> well, I have to start by saying, I, I never saw it. This When you told me that we we're doing this, I watched it uh, for the first time. So I, I don't, I've never seen this. I had never seen it, so I I didn't grow up with it. So I'm my review is based on me as an adult watching this movie for the first time. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. <laughs> okay. Well, a, a quick synopsis is Ace Hunter, who's played by Brian, Bo uh, Brian Boswick, um, is a leader of Megaforce, an elite group of American soldiers who travel the world to fight evil. And in this case, evil is represented by <laughs> this is how they describe it: a third-rate dictator who they must blow to bits. <laughs> So that was the, <laughs> that was a basic <laughs> basic plot of this. So because basically Mega Force, it reminded me of GI Joe. Yes, like it's like this. Very much. This, everybody sort of has a specialty. Um, yeah. and I thought, oh, this is a big rip off of GI Joe, but this actually came out before it. They yeah. already had been made at the same time as GI Joe was coming out. So Real American Hero hadn't really come out yet. I don't think it came out till eighty three. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has had no impact on one or the other. So it was, uh, but it had a very like GI Joe vibe to me. Like, absolutely. It, I, yeah. I felt the same way. I actually, I actually thought that that too, because they are very like real American heroes and like uh, with their super tech, high tech gear. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, it's very GI Joe ish. <laughs> so it's, we'll go into a, um, a, uh, our hits and misses for this and we'll just see and obviously plot points and things will come out as we do it but there's a there's a there's a lot to unpack in this movie yes. <laughs> so, so larry i'm gonna get you right off the top but what, what do you want to do hit or miss um all right well I'll, i i guess i'll start with a hit a hit i'll start with a hit and it's an it's an odd hit but it's something that actually made me quite enjoy this movie the it really to me it felt like this movie was a feature length toy commercial <laughs> Um, because if you remember the toy commercials back in the 80s, they all had this super awesome high caliber um music that was like yeah. action music, and, and it was the same sort of sound like the same sort of soundtrack through this whole thing. And then they created these vehicles, they have cars and a, t a tank type thing and motorcycles that you know that they were creating to make toys out of these things so it, it yeah. the whole thing to me felt like i was watching an hour and a half long toy commercial from the 80s which and i really enjoy toy commercials from the 80s so i was like this is actually pretty cool it's like a toy commercial <laughs> like a feature length movie toy commercial <laughs> so that, i i considered that a bit of a hit because i thought it was, <laughs> it was they knew what they were doing like there was like no hiding it <laughs> they're making cool stuff to sell to kids <laughs> <laughs> uh, well one of my hits on this was the uh i'll get into some more later but the uh um since you mentioned this the music the soundtrack to me was a hit on this like it was totally uh, gerald ml was the was the composer of it total like cheese action like a team style music like yes. just like the quintessential 80s like just rock cheese like it was just so good like it was just set the tone for everything it was just it was amazing Okay, so wait, um, but the, I, gotta the, you, I gotta stop you real quick. I that was a hit for me too, and I actually wrote quintessential '80s rock songs. I literally said the exact same words you did. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what but, it was. But the highlight for me in this was the the uh, theme song, which wasn't done by him. It was done by a group called Seven Oh Seven, 
which is the uh the megaforce theme song which yes. is like a ro- this rock song like the force and it was like it was like amazing like it was like i actually had to go look it up because i was like you can get it from spotify you can yeah. download it yeah and you can download this whole soundtrack as well it's oh. available on spotify and it was like, as like this is the greatest like this yeah. is like one of my favorite things of all time i gotta find this on like vinyl like for sure <laughs> And I got to find that 707 version too on some sort of vinyl or something. Cause it was just yeah. like so good. Like, it is. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Like the, the music really like pulled the movie together. Like it was, it was pure eighties action. It was just, I oh, love yeah. it. That was so great. <laughs> let's uh, let's move into a miss here. How about this? Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my miss, which I guess for some people could be a hit. Too. So I, it's a little ambiguous, but for me, it was a bit of a mess. Barry Boswick, whose name in the movie is Ace Hunter, that's that's his character's yeah. name, looked exactly... Which is a badass name, by the way. Okay, it is. Yep. It's a really cool name. That's a good name. But he was made to look exactly like a male Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> like, he looks like... He was. It's exactly like... Uh, uh, if you put a beard on Olivia Newton John, that's who the main character was. Like from Xanadu. Yes. <laughs> like, are they intentionally intentionally capitalizing on her look? Because he had like <laughs> you can see if you're watching the, the the YouTube video, you can see him behind his big flowing hair with a thin bandana, and it it was just oh, yeah. it was so it was so over the top. And if you there were a couple of close up scenes of him. Like cl- a couple of close-up shots, he had so much pancake makeup on. He looked, he looked like a Ken doll version of a male Olivia Newton-John. That's what he looked like. He literally looked like a Ken doll. I, I will so- tell you right now, I, this is going to be my costume for Halloween. I am oh, yeah. I'm almost positive. No one's going to know who I am, but oh. I, I'm, I'm going. I, all I need is like a morph suit. Yep. And, a, and an ascot, and I think I've yep. got it. <laughs> that's all you need. And some tall boots. And, and, that, and, that's and a headband. Cool. I've got yep. the beard. All I, yeah, and then I yep. need some, like, blonde hair, and I'm good to go. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it was so over the top. Like, it is so over the top. I don't know what, like, I don't know if they're trying to get, like, the the greatest, I, I don't know. I can't even explain it. But literally, it's a male Olivia Newton-John. So, for me, that, it was almost too distracting to watch him because his <laughs> hair is mesmerizing. <laughs> But one of my misses on it was uh, as cool as like the visuals for like I mean as cheesy as they were and like the the this this kind of cartoonish world that they had created. Um, I thought it was too complicated plot wise. Yes, like part of it was very very simple. Like we got need to hire these guys to get rid of this like sort of like this dictator or whatever. But but at the set uh, there's all this political stuff. And first of all, it's not set in the U.S. It's like. They exist, but there's these two different lands. I can't remember what they're called. Oh, that's the Republic right. yes. of of Sardun, and which is the one they live in, and yeah. then the other one was G- Gamabia or something, which is the other land that the other guys were in. It was just like, like way too I complicated. I don't even know if they're actually on Earth. <laughs> like, why would they? Well, I think they were because someone had like a Confederate flag on their. Oh, like, that's right. Because yes, every member is like they they've taken. I think um. Uh, Ace, even in that picture that behind you has like a U.S. flag on his on his yeah, jacket. I get. I don't. But know. it was. It it's supposed to be in the. It is supposed to be in the future, so it's supposed to be right. like things have changed and 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 like how the Earth is set up is different, like as far as continents and 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 things. But uh, yeah. I just found it really complicated. Like when they actually went at the beginning, there's a part where they they do a, like a raid on the on the dictator uh, Duke Guer- Guerrera. Duke. Yeah. Yes. Also a cool name. Uh, so they do this raid on Duke Guerrera and then, but then but they're in another country, which they're not supposed to be in. But then there's all this confusion of that, how they can't come back, but it's like, well, why? Cause they do come back and it was all fine. So I don't know yeah. like what the deal was, why they like, and the guy that tells them that like this general uh, comes flying in to tell them that, well, it's like, well, how did he get out then? Yeah. Like it was just, none of it made any sense. Like yeah. I, I just decided <laughs> to just go with it. I really didn't, think too hard <laughs> about the logistics of what they were doing because like i don't know i'm just looking at the pretty motorcycles and <laughs> and by the way the general looked exactly like, like a like a cheap michael kane yeah like if you couldn't get michael kane you got this guy like he was like exactly like michael kane i thought it was <laughs> originally when i first saw him like so did i they got michael kane for this movie but no it totally wasn't you're right he was like yeah, michael kane lookalike <laughs> the poor man's michael kane <laughs> yeah i just thought it was they made it more complicated than it needed to be like it could still yes. have been in the future but they they just made it like way too complicated that like this whole political thing just 
So like, I don't even know what the bad guy was doing. Like, I don't know yeah. what his whole point was. Like, there was a lot of things that were like, and even things like instead of calling something a holograph, they called it a hologram. Like they like just yeah. change little things that are like almost like they're gonna get sued if they called it something. So yeah. they called it something else. Like yeah. there was just little things in it, and I'm like, just call it what it is and just go with it. Like it just seems I, weird. I just feel like Mattel really wasn't interested in story. <laughs> they just no. wanted it to look so cool. <laughs> that's all they were caring about right there <laughs> all right so the, see that was a that was a so you got a miss there okay so i'm gonna throw in another miss here there's okay. a there's a scene it's sort no. of in the middle of of the movie where they they jump out of a, an airplane ace ace hunter and his i guess i don't know if he, it's a girl he likes who's like a she's what is her she's like a senator or she's, a She's the daughter of like a president or something. Oh, I didn't quite, yeah. I didn't quite understand exactly what she was, no. but uh, she was, she she was like like not royalty, but she was like right. like politically like high up. Like that's so. right. Yeah. So he they, he was kind of hitting on her through the whole thing. Anyway, for some reason they had to jump out of an airplane, and I swear this scene lasted like twenty minutes. I don't know how long it actually lasted, but it lasted. Oh yeah. Hour. And they're so they're skydiving, and so they're intercutting like actual footage of skydiving like they had a person with a camera to like green screen of them doing this ballet it's like literally a sky ballet that they're that they're doing where at one point she's upside down like on her back obviously like on uh on a uh a, a table or something because yeah, her green table or something flat. yes her back is completely flat and she's turning on her back upside down and he comes in. So she's upside down. He comes in and lands on top of her and they both sort of rotate. It's so badly done. Like it is so, so badly done, but it is just, it just goes on and on. And like, how, why are they doing this? Like, why are they, shouldn't they just be like jumping out to hit the ground? Why do they have to have a ballet as they're going down? <laughs> but how do they both know what they're doing too? In that case, like they, Yes. That's the first time he she jumped out of a plane with him, so I don't know how he knew or what was going to happen. That's right. Yeah, she had never jumped out. Like she, he was encouraging her to jump out. Like he was trying to be like, okay, it's going to be. A I whatever. think she had jumped out before because that whole that whole sequence is one of my misses. I'll just I can jump kind of into it while we're talking yeah. about this. But there's this so this girl is like she's come to kind of observe what's going right. on with the mega force with the general. So there's just the two of them that meet them, um, and so part of this is that she she has something invested in this battle. So she wants to go with them. And they're like, no, you don't, you're not highly trained enough to go with us. So she goes through a series of, of training, but each time she, she kills it every time she does any of the things they put up, right. uh, including the skydiving. So I'm assuming that like, he was kind of being like, Oh, you don't know what you're doing, but then she did. So I, I'm assuming she jumped out before, but, but yeah. I just thought that whole thing was a miss to me like this. It's so like eighties of like only men can do things and women can't. Yes, yes. Like there was no she, redeeming value for her. That would have been the redeeming no. value if she would have went with them, and yeah. you know what I mean for for her character. But she she did. She just stood and th did thumbs up every once in a while when he was like, yeah. <laughs> just, and she just accepted it. I was like, okay, even though I've done everything you can do, I guess I'm yeah. not qualified to go, so I'll just stay back. Yeah, like, it just didn't make any sense. No, it's very dated. Like it's very of its time because that's that would not fly today. But no, it, no, not at all. Like, no. So, why, don't we, why don't we go to a hit? We've had a couple of misses. All right. I, I'm, out, I'm out of misses, actually. That was my last oh, miss. Okay, I, I have a couple more. But anyway. <laughs> okay, well, we'll go. let's go to a hit. I got, I've got a hit for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I, I give a hit to the amount of enthusiasm that went into this film. All like, right. I, I, the, uh, even though as cheesy as it was, and I feel like a lot of thought was put into it. Like, the, like the, there was a lot of things that they, I think they felt would really resonate with audiences. Like they, they had kind of like quirky characters, like all the side characters were kind of quirky in one way or another. Yeah. Uh, they, they uh, the whole look and feel of it. Like, is, cause you think back to star Wars when they were doing star Wars, they probably looked at that and thought, this is so stupid. It's never going to fly. Right. Like all yeah. these X-wing fighters and all these weird things and these aliens. And, and, it, and it did. So I feel like even though things were like kind of futuristic looking, I feel like they thought, this is really going to hit like, and I just, I felt like everybody was in it like all the way. Um, and even like the underground bunker, like was quite big in its scope. Uh, I remind me about the underground bunker. I want to talk about that in a second, but the, uh, but I just felt like there was just a lot of enthusiasm. And so I, I was reading, someone posted something about the movie. I don't know if it was on like 
IMDb, but someone commented on it who had worked not on the movie, but was like part of the catering of the movie. Okay. <laughs> and, said, and, and said that they had worked on it in that capacity and said that they, people talked about it on set. Like this was going to be like the biggest hit of the, of the year. Really? Like, so they genuinely they, believed? I, they genuinely believed? Yeah. Like they, well, Cause I mean, you don't know, right? Like it could have been like this massive hit. I also read that they'd signed uh, uh, Boswick to, um, a three picture deal thinking that there's probably going to be sequels. And the second one was supposed to be called deeds, not words. So they, oh. they thought there's for sure there was going to be a sequel to this and it was going to yeah. do really well. And they like definite sequel. Wow. They should really do one now. They, they really should actually should. do one. Yes. All right. At least with Will Ferrell or <laughs> Yeah, at least they're... and I guess that's that is part of what I enjoyed about this movie was that it didn't take itself too seriously. Like like obviously there was a lot of action, but there was humor too. Like they, yeah. the characters weren't trying to be super serious all the time and like super GI Joe like. Like there was yeah. Like it felt like they they injected this humor on purpose and they the people were having fun. Like they they seemed like they were enjoying themselves. Like it didn't seem like they knew that yeah. they were a piece of crap and and they had to do it anyway. So let's just yeah. They actually look like they're having fun. So it, 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 it was it was fun. unique enough that I think that they that they felt like this could be something. And you never know yeah. with audiences, right? Like this could have been like people could have been like, oh my God, this is like hilarious or this was yes. great. And yeah. but you, do, you never know. And it, but apparently not. <laughs> no. Apparently you did not. <laughs> well I mean it's not a good movie. It's not it's not what you call a good movie. So <laughs> Not the not good, but it is the greatest of all time. I right. will say yes. that. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> but you're right. Okay, I I support that. I support that hit. That's good. Um, I've got uh, I've got another hit. Um, and it's uh, it goes back to a, another scene, uh, in the movie. Um, there's a scene like near the end where there's where they've gathered all of their high tech, um, uh, vehicles, and they're in the desert and they're driving, <laughs> and nothing really happens there's just like they send out their motorcycles and then they send out their tanks and then they send out the things but it it made me laugh so hard because all i could think of was it was the battle to determine who could create the biggest dust cloud because <laughs> it was literally they'd start with the smallest vehicle and there'd be a little dust cloud and then they'd get like a bigger vehicle and there'd be a bigger dust cloud and then they'd get a tank and it'd be a huge dust cloud and then the dust cloud would like envelop everybody so it looked like they were literally just trying to create dust clouds and who could be the first to do one that would cover everybody <laughs> <laughs> well, on top of it, they had the smoke off the back of the bikes at one point yes. when they're riding, and they create a smoke. They created a smoke like uh, thing behind them, and <laughs> a lot of smoke in this movie. It was it was just I just thought that scene was awesome because it just like it was a showcase for all of their cool vehicles that they created, and then they just made it even bigger by creating these massive clouds of dust and dirt, and <laughs> it's just like this is awesome. All right, what's what's some of your misses? So. <laughs> Okay, going back to their their weaponry. So the the whole point is that they've got these vehicles with guns and all of that. I would say ninety percent, maybe even ninety eight percent of the shots that they took from these weapons didn't hit anything, and in fact, just hurt, hit the dirt. Like there were so <laughs> many explosions coming out of the ground, like around people, and they would shoot at vehicles, but it wouldn't hit the vehicle. It would hit behind the vehicle to create a like an explosion behind the vehicle. They never actually like hit anything. They were like <laughs> the most inaccurate high-tech <laughs> weapons that I have ever seen in my life. I'm like, just like hit stuff. <laughs> They're trained by stormtroopers. <laughs> Seriously. So in going along with that, um, and this is this is a miss just overall with the, with movies with motorcycles i've never understood putting machine guns or any guns right in the center of a of a of a motorcycle like between the handlebars because either you you have to shoot at what you're driving towards right because yeah. thing so you have to shoot straight ahead of you and like aim your like drive right into the thing you're trying to explore. basically yeah or you have to like like weave back and forth so that you can turn your gun, but then your motorcycle is going to be going like this <laughs> because, <laughs> because you have to like aim it with 
depending on where you're turning. And it just they're like logistically, it doesn't make any sense to put a machine gun between the the handlebars of a motorcycle. <laughs> you need to put one on the on the front of your bike now. I, I feel like I that needs to be done. Like, just to see how it works, because I've never understood that. <laughs> Drop a I, Nerf gun to the front and see what happens. Yes. And try to shoot. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was hilarious. It just made me laugh so hard because they obviously are not going to hit anything because they, they're not, they're riding beside the thing that they want to hit. So their gun would be like way. Always off straight. Pace. Yeah. It's always oh. straight ahead. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought, so that's, that's a bit of a miss for me. <laughs> High tech <laughs> weapons that were like the lowest tech like thing that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> I think they're going for more badassery than they were yes. like actual like w functionality on it. It's like yes, <laughs> there's no functionality at all. But they were awesome. <laughs> like the vehicles were actually super cool to look at. <laughs> uh, apparently, they cost about a million to make, and they really? they all actually drove like they're real vehicles. Like well, that's they got I mean, some it yeah. It it doesn't surprise me because there were a fair bit of like they had a whole like like a whole raft of of uh motorcycles and dune buggies and this yeah. like you know rv type thing you can see if you're watching the youtube video it's over my shoulder here it's like rv thing with a with a radar dish on top because they all had radar dishes on top in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> they did that was like the thing yes <laughs> very inconspicuous <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so anyway I, never, I always thought that was i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> All right, you have well, off your off your bikes. I've got one of the greatest hits of all time. I think okay. it's the greatest one we've ever done. All right. It's the flying bike and it's right yes. over my shoulder. <laughs> I think that it's that scene in my opinion is one of the greatest scenes in cinema. Like that when <laughs> so the I in this scene if you have, obviously probably most people haven't seen the movie based on its, its box office but uh, yeah. the, the plane's flying away Ace Hunter is like the last man standing on the ground. He's on yep. his bike trying to catch up to the plane. The whole back of the plane is down. I don't know what they call those kind of planes where you can like, like a, drive yeah. right into them. Uh, like, like a, a cargo plane, plane or yeah, like, like a troop transport thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the plane has to take off. They have no choice because there's mountains up ahead or whatever. So they start taking off. He's yeah. just on the ground on his bike. All of a sudden he hits this button and two like poles come out the sides yes. and a rocket booster. Yeah. And he starts flying in the air like it starts. It lifts off like a like a like a plane. I don't know how high it can go, yeah. and it has the greatest chroma key I've ever seen in the movie, <laughs> yes. where he's flying it, and the, and the and it's all moving in the background. And everybody on the plane's like, "Come on, you can do it, Ace. You can make it." And he's like, just trying to hold on for dear life, trying to make it to the to the thing. And this is the one special effect that actually kind of threw me. Because they they show them in in the back of it, and you can see him show coming up in, oh, in the. Yeah. In I know what you're thing. I was like, okay, that's just a chrome. It's just a, a screen with him on it, right? Yeah. But then he, he then he suddenly he shows up in the. I don't know how they did that, unless they had yeah. him on like um, I think maybe they had a screen and had him on wires or something. I'm not sure, but it was actually a pretty decent special effect. And then he lands, of course, in the plane at the last second. It was. I totally. I totally got that. I had to rewatch that scene too because I was like. What? How? Did, so he was out of the plane flying, and then actually land like drove into the back. Yeah. Of the, that was actually a pretty cool scene. But what wasn't cool was right before that, Ace <laughs> Ace Hunter gets all cocky on his flying motorcycle and does a three hundred and sixty degree like turn. So he's upside down, <laughs> and then comes back around for no reason was... at all. So the but so I have I had a, a miss uh, to to go along with that yeah. they had they had uh referenced this the special feature on the motorcycle throughout <laughs> the movie the they have like of course there's the scientist his name is eggs there's the scientist who creates all the special special <laughs> special things anyway <laughs> he so all the <laughs> i forgot about him yeah eggs he's the best <laughs> anyway so and of course, he's the smartest person there, but he acts like the stupidest person. I don't know why. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, anyway, I don't know. All the way through, he keeps saying to Ace, there are two red buttons on the control panel of his motorcycle. All he kept saying was, press one, then two. One, then two. Okay, you got it? Okay, perfect. But that's all he would say. He didn't tell him what those things did. Or like, yeah, what, what they were. What they were, why to press one and two, like nothing. 
So when Ace finally presses one and then two, he was like, what? There's, there's like wings coming out of this thing. He had no experience ever flying this thing. He didn't even know it was going to fly. <laughs> and yet somehow he flies and is stable enough to do a full 360 degree turn upside down while he's flying and still be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, all right. <laughs> I'm Ace Hunter. Hey. <laughs> Well, I mean, really, it is Ace Hunter. I mean, oh, I think yes. you're just you're forgetting that piece of the puzzle. So that's why he was able to do that, like because oh, he's one I of the see. one of the greatest heroes of our generation. <laughs> so he's... I guess I missed. I'm that still part. laughing at eggs. He's like the Q. He'd be the Q of this, right? Yeah. Like he's like he totally was. Yeah, eggs. <laughs> I don't know. Eggs. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> All right, I got. Do you have any more? I I've done other than that. It was one of the greatest movies oh, of all time. Okay, well I've got but, I've got one more. I've got one more okay. miss that happened right at the very end of the movie. Uh oh. So <laughs> for some reason, he and his girlfriend, the president's daughter or whatever, de <laughs> determined that like if they were if they wanted to like like do like a like a a kiss between the two of them from long distance. Most people just do like a mwah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like kiss and for some reason, they would kiss their thumb and then, like, give it a thumbs up. Like, kiss the thumb, give it a thumbs up. I don't know where, why they decided that was cooler. I don't know. But anyway, the very last scene in the movie, <laughs> <laughs> because an 80s movie always ends with a freeze frame of... Oh, of, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, if it's good, it does. It has to, yeah. yeah. If it's a good movie, yeah. So this one is Ace kissing his thumb and then giving the thumbs up but when he does his face it kind of yeah i i apologize if you're if you're listening to the audio version of this if you're watching the 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 youtube i'll try to i'll try to mimic what he does okay so he kisses his thumb and then it goes to freeze like this <laughs> he's got like this face and that's <laughs> That's what it was not want. a good freeze frame. <laughs> no, it was a terrible freeze frame. I think that's what you want us to remember about this movie. Was this, the last second of the movie is like the main super awesome G.I. Joe hero. <laughs> it's, it's, like really, they couldn't have given him some better like, hey, like, like a smoldering <laughs> eyelid or, you know. A, a smoldering <laughs> eyelid. <laughs> His face on fire? What's happening? Oh, no. to, what's happening to Ace Hunter? <laughs> I don't know, but the, the face oh, that he did, just I was like, what just happened there? <laughs> they chose the wrong <laughs> frame or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I got on this movie. <laughs> So what, what's your what, what? No, considering you didn't watch it as a kid, so this is yes. all new to you. Like you've never yes. seen it before. So what, what? What do you think? Does it still? Does it still hold up? I because I'm a child of the '80s and loved like the cheesy action movies and loved those kinds of vehicles and I loved Hot Wheels. I was a huge fan of Hot Wheels. I really enjoyed this movie. I actually, yeah. I actually really quite liked it and will will watch it again. Um, and I, I may even buy it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll go that far. <laughs> but, but I actually really liked it, and it actually makes me want to go on eBay and see if anybody's selling like, like model versions of some of these vehicles I'd love oh yeah that. you might be able to find them yeah like that rv thing that's right there with the uh with the yeah light dish on it i'd love to have like a model version of that that would be cool <laughs> <laughs> what, so what did well, you think after buying this thing <laughs> I, I like i hadn't seen it in years and i was like it's because it, it always intrigues me even as an adult because it's just so ridiculous looking like everything is yeah. so like futuristic right like the, the way they made them at the time um i loved it i was like I'm this is like going to be a yearly watch for me. I think oh. I just it's like it's just so cheesy and so good. Yeah. Uh, just like just the action. Like I still don't really know what the plot was, but it doesn't matter. It was like nope. tons. It's just explosions. Like everything you'd want, in, like in a movie, and the spandex like suits. Yeah, like it's just awesome. Apparently, I just read this as well that Matt Stone and Trey Parker, um, some of the uh, Team America is based on this movie. Oh, is that like right? They, they, they the concept of this specialty group, uh, like there's there's scenes in it that are like like directly almost from this. Like they, I can see that because they they love this movie so much. Apparently, so yeah, I can see I can totally see that. Now I have to go rewatch that movie, but yeah, I can totally. Yeah. I, I mean, 
as bad as this movie was, I could see it being influential just in the scope of the action part of it because like their their explosions and like when they had full on explosions were really cool. Like they blew up all kinds of stuff. And yeah. and it was actually pretty exciting. Like it, it was it was it was neat. Like it was big scale with like n- no budget. <laughs> yeah, it? like and the, I mean at the time, I guess a twenty million dollar budget probably would have been big or decent oh, probably, budget yeah. for a movie. Like, but yeah. there's definitely the most thumbs up per capita in a movie I've ever seen. Like, there's a lot of thumbs up in this movie. Like, there's always yeah. like... <laughs> there was oh, so many. Don't forget, don't forget this one. <laughs> That's, that's my favorite, favorite thumbs up of the whole movie. Yeah, that's my favorite thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. But is, yeah, it was, I, I just thought it was like awesome. Like I was just like, this is like a classic eighties, like just B level, just, you know, I don't know how it didn't do better than it did. And I don't know why I saw it so much as a kid. It's probably on super channel or one of those, like, like those movie channels as a kid, first choice or something. Cause I, yeah. I remember watching it a lot, like as a kid, did, but like, do you remember, did you see it in the theater? Like you would have been like 11. Do you remember? Yeah, seeing- no, I don't think I saw it in the theater. I I may have, but I I think I saw it on TV maybe a couple of years later. Yeah, like once it became like I would like on like home video or whatever. But it was uh just so good. It's one of my new favorite movies. I'm definitely getting a T-shirt, and I'm definitely yeah. trying to gonna find it. I'm gonna try to find those sound that soundtrack to this for sure. Oh, absolutely. I feel like this is the kind of movie that if a theater picked it up for midnight showings, it would do really well. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it would become a cult. I mean, I'm sure it already it already is a cult classic. But if you showed it in movie theaters with a crowd, middle of the night, and just people could get rowdy and laugh, at it, it would do really well. Because I feel like there's a lot of like it's just exciting moments that people would get. Yeah, into. like terrible <laughs> terrible lines and, yes. and like just like like cheesy action and things like that. Like the, totally, and people. But, uh, I don't know. Up. You know, I think it'd be great. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I'm really considering being Ace Hunter for, for Halloween. And I don't care I if no one knows who I am. Who did oh, I, I went as Percy I, I went as Perseus last year for yes. Halloween. So yeah. I, I might continue it this year with my uh with my my uh, ace hunter. Just and, and like just, zero people know who I am. Like no. zero people will know. But just be ready for know. a lot of people to say, uh, that's a really good Olivia Newton John outfit. <laughs> <laughs> just, be to do. just be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So uh you don't know what you're picking for the next show, right? I do, but I'm gonna keep it a secret. Ooh, so like you're secret. just gonna have to you're gonna have to tune in. It's so secret I don't even have a chance to watch it before the no. <laughs> okay, <perfect. laughs> Yeah, you have to tune in and watch, and that will be our awesome. big season five wrap up show. So it's yep. coming, it's coming I- very soon. I think we've done more shows this season than we ever have, I think, I right? Think we have. Yeah, oh, we're on a roll. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had a big season. This is a big season this year. Well, we we, you know, we did five, we did everything. Five is a big number, you know. You gotta yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like a big anniversary season for us. So we had to. <laughs> you know, we pulled out all the stops. It was like an unlimited budget we had to work with, and <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. yep, yep. Season <laughs> six will be like three episodes. It'll yeah, be exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and, and in the meantime, also we're going to. Um, Niagara Falls Comic Con in a week too, so or this weekend coming up. So we'll be able to talk about that in the next show as well. So, exactly. so uh, so join us on our socials. Check it out. I think you should post some of the stuff that you've done. Have you posted anything from your? No, Larry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I Larry. will. I will, I will <laughs> throw some stuff up there. You'll see it. You'll love it. It's gonna be so exciting for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're Loop and Larry, uh, Guardians of Geek. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check us out on our socials, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Produced by Matthew C. Loop and Lawrence Simner. A Loop and Larry production. Bueller. He liked it. Hey, Mikey. Bueller. Bad news. Fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Inconceivable. Brian's right. It's an elf. Wax on. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Oh, Captain, my Captain. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Wax off.